Hey kids! Today we're going to learn all about the different types of soil and what makes each one special. You know, when you think about it, dirt is pretty amazing stuff. It's the foundation for all life on land. Without healthy soil, we wouldn't have tasty fruits and vegetables to eat, beautiful flowers to smell, or towering trees to climb. Let's dig in. First up, we've got sand. You know sand, right? It's that gritty stuff you find on beaches and in sandboxes. Sand is made up of tiny little pieces of rock that have been worn down over time by wind and water. It's fascinating to think about how these tiny grains have traveled through time. Imagine a big tough rock getting a tiny little massage for thousands of years. That's how sand is formed. The wind and water work together to break down these rocks into the fine particles we see today. Over time, these particles get smaller and smaller, eventually becoming the sand we know and love. It's a slow but incredible process. Now, sand is pretty cool, but it's not the best for growing things. Why? Well, those tiny little particles of rock in sand have big spaces between them, kind of like a loose pile of marbles. Water can pass through those spaces really easily, which means that sand dries out super fast. Imagine trying to give a thirsty plant a big gulp of water in a cup full of holes. The water would just drain right through, leaving the plant pretty unhappy. That's why you don't see too many plants growing directly on the beach. The environment is just too harsh for most plants to thrive. But hey, that doesn't mean sand is useless. It's actually really important for certain animals like turtles who lay their eggs in the sand. The sand provides a safe and warm place for the eggs to develop. And of course, we use sand to make all sorts of things like glass and concrete. Pretty neat, huh? Sand is a key ingredient in these materials, making it essential for construction and manufacturing. So. While sand might not be great for growing plants, it's incredibly useful in other ways. From providing a habitat for animals to being a crucial component in building materials, sand plays a vital role in our world. Next time you're at the beach or playing in a sandbox, take a moment to appreciate the journey those tiny grains of sand have been on. It's a reminder of the incredible processes that shape our planet. So, whether it's on sandy shores or in sandboxes, sand is more than just tiny grains of rock. It's a testament to the power of nature and time. And who knows, maybe the next time you see a grain of sand, you'll think about the incredible journey it's been on and the many roles it plays in our world. From sandy shores to sandboxes, sand is an amazing part of our natural world. Pretty neat, huh? Next up is silt. Silt is kind of like sand's smoother, more sophisticated cousin. Its particles are smaller than sand, so it feels less gritty and more like, well, silk. You often find silt near rivers and streams because it gets deposited there when the water slows down. Now, silt is better at holding onto water than sand because those smaller particles pack together more tightly. Think about trying to fit a bunch of tennis balls in a box versus trying to fit a bunch of marbles in the same box. You can fit way more tennis balls because they're smaller and don't leave as many gaps. Same idea with silt. This means that plants growing in silt can get a nice long drink of water. However, if silt gets too wet, it can become compacted, kind of like a wet sponge that's been squeezed too tightly. This makes it hard for plant roots to spread out and grow. Hold on to your hats, kids, because now we're getting to the stickiest soil of them all, clay. It's a fascinating type of soil that has some unique properties. Clay is made up of teeny tiny particles, even smaller than silt. These particles are so minuscule that you need a microscope to see them clearly. These particles are so small that they stick together like glue when they get wet. This stickiness is what makes clay so special and useful in many ways. You know how Play-Doh feels, all squishy and moldable. Well, clay is kind of like that, but even more versatile. Clay is kind of like that. You can shape it, mold it, and it holds its form really well. Now, you might think that something that can hold on to water so well would be a gardener's best friend, right? Well, not so fast. There's more to the story. While it's true that clay is full of nutrients that plants love, its superpower of holding onto water can actually be a problem if things get out of hand. Too much water retention can be a big issue. Imagine trying to take a sip of water from a straw that's completely clogged up. It's pretty tough, right? That's similar to what plant roots experience in overly wet clay soil. That's kind of what it's like for plant roots trying to grow in clay soil that's too wet. The dense, sticky nature of clay makes it hard for roots to spread out and grow. The water can't drain away easily and the roots can't get the air they need to breathe. This can lead to waterlogged conditions that are harmful to plants. It's like trying to breathe underwater. 
Just like we need air to breathe, plant roots need air too. Not good for plants and definitely not good for worms. Both plants and worms struggle in these conditions, making it a tricky situation for gardeners. Okay, so we've talked about sand, silt and clay, and we've learned that each one has its own pros and cons. Sand drains water quickly but doesn't hold nutrients well. Silt holds water better but can become compacted. Clay retains nutrients but can be too dense for roots to penetrate easily. But what if there was a soil that was just right? A soil that combined the best features of all three. A soil that had the perfect balance of drainage, water retention and nutrients. Imagine a soil that could support a wide variety of plants from vegetables to flowers with ease. Well, guess what? There is. It's called loam, and it's like the Goldilocks of soil. Not too sandy, not too silty, not too clayey, but just right. Loam is the ideal soil for most gardening needs. Loam is a magical mix of sand, silt and clay, along with some other goodies like decomposing leaves and organic matter. This organic matter enriches the soil, providing essential nutrients for plant growth. This perfect blend means that loam can hold on to just the right amount of water for plants, not too much, not too little. It ensures that plants have access to water without becoming waterlogged. It's also loose and crumbly, which makes it easy for roots to spread out and grow strong. This structure allows for good air circulation, which is vital for root health. Think of loam as the superhero of the soil world, combining the best qualities of all the other soils. It provides a balanced environment where plants can thrive. It's the soil that most plants dream of growing in, offering them the perfect conditions to flourish. And it's the reason why gardeners get so excited when they find a patch of nice, loamy earth. It's like striking gold in the gardening world, a true treasure for any green thumb. Now, we can't forget about one of the most important ingredients in healthy soil humus. Humus sounds kind of funny, but it's basically just a fancy word for decomposing plant and animal material. Think fallen leaves, grass clippings and even tiny little bug skeletons. I know what you're thinking. Ew, that sounds gross. But trust me, humus is like black gold for your garden. As all that organic matter breaks down, it releases nutrients back into the soil, kind of like a natural fertiliser. Humus also helps to improve soil structure, making it fluffier and better at holding on to water and air. Imagine humus as the chef of the soil world, taking all those scraps and turning them into a delicious feast for plants. So next time you see a pile of leaves, don't think of it as garbage. Think of it as humus in the making. Let's revisit our friend sand for a moment. Remember how we talked about its amazing ability to drain water quickly? Well, it turns out that this can actually be a good thing for certain types of plants. Some plants, like cacti and succulents, are adapted to living in dry environments and don't like to have their roots sitting in water for too long. For these plants, sandy soil is like a dream come true. Think of it like this. Imagine you're wearing a pair of rain boots on a sunny day. Your feet would get pretty sweaty and uncomfortable, right? But if you were wearing sandals, your feet would stay cool and dry. It's the same idea with plants and soil. Some plants need their feet to stay dry, and that's where sand comes in handy. Now let's give silt its time to shine. Remember how we talked about silt's ability to hold on to water? Well, this, combined with its fine texture, makes it a very fertile type of soil. Silt particles are small enough to hold on to nutrients, but not so small that they become compacted like clay. This means that plants growing in silt have access to both the water and nutrients they need to thrive. Think of silt as a cozy blanket that keeps plant roots warm and well-fed. It's like the perfect balance between the airy lightness of sand and the dense richness of clay. Many crops, like corn and wheat, grow particularly well in silty soil. OK, it's time to give clay its due. Yes, we know it can be a bit of a challenge to work with, but it's important to remember that clay is actually incredibly nutrient rich. Those tiny particles that stick together so well are also great at holding onto nutrients, making clay a potential gold mine for plant growth. The key with clay is all about balance. If you can improve its drainage and prevent it from becoming too compacted, you can unlock its full potential and grow some truly amazing plants. Think of it like taming a wild beast. It takes a bit of effort, but the rewards can be well worth it. Let's circle back to our superstar, loam. We already know that loam is the ideal soil for most plants, but why is that? Well, it all comes down to its perfect balance of physical and chemical properties. 
Loam has just the right amount of sand, silt and clay to provide excellent drainage, water retention and nutrient availability. Think of loam as a perfectly tuned instrument, with each component working in harmony to create a beautiful symphony of plant growth. It's no wonder that gardeners go to great lengths to create and maintain loamy soil. It's the foundation for a truly thriving garden. And last but not least, let's give a big round of applause to Humus, the unsung hero of the soil world. Humus may not be as glamorous as loam, but it plays a vital role in supporting healthy plant growth. As organic matter breaks down, it releases essential nutrients back into the soil, acting like a slow-release fertilizer. But humus does more than just provide nutrients, it also improves soil structure, making it fluffier and better at holding on to water and air. Think of humus as Loam's trusty sidekick, working behind the scenes to create the optimal environment for plant roots to thrive. Together, Loam and humus make an unstoppable team. Now you know all about the different types of soil and their characteristics. Remember, healthy soil is the foundation for healthy plants. From the gritty texture of sand to the sticky embrace of clay, each type of soil has its own unique properties that make it special. And let's not forget about humus, the secret ingredient that gives soil its superpowers. So next time you're digging in the dirt, take a moment to appreciate the amazing world beneath your feet. It's a world teeming with life and essential for supporting all the plants and animals we love. Keep exploring, keep asking questions, and keep on learning.